Hello everyone, Justin here, and in this video today, I'm gonna to be talking about and comparing the 2018 Ford Focus RS in real life versus how it is depicted and simulated in Gran Turismo 7 by Polyphony Digital. So yeah, Justin stays off, and I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks. The Ford Focus RS MK3 is an economy hatchback platform re-engineered for track-capable performance. With a 2.3-liter four-cylinder turbocharged engine, the Focus RS makes 350 horsepower, 475 newton meters of peak torque, and goes zero to 60 miles per hour in 4.7 seconds in a Focus. But Ford didn't just upgrade the power. They also retrofitted their car with an adaptive all-wheel drive system capable of sending up to 70% of power to the rears. They installed big Brembo brakes, a higher flow exhaust, driver adjustable suspension, a standard six-speed manual, structural upgrades, body upgrades, as well as interior upgrades. The final RS MK3 was released in 2018, and when I lost my old car to a red light runner a year or so ago, I saw one of these used, decided to learn how to drive stick off the lot, and make the 2018 Focus RS my daily driver. So how does it drive? <laughs> When driving the RS, it's almost always letting you know how capable it is. This car is properly quick. It just gets up and goes, and the power stays there almost all the way up the gears. I just love playing around with the power band between second and fourth gear, feeling that turbo kick in. It's an engine that feels so alive at high RPMs. It almost just encourages you to run it harder. Having the four piston Brembo brakes is awesome as well. The car gets slowed down on a dime just as well as it gets going. And the brakes aren't only enjoyable from a performance perspective, it honestly just feels safer even in traffic to be able to stop so quickly. But my favorite aspect of this car by far is its handling. If you ever get a chance to drive one of these, I can almost guarantee you you'll be impressed with how well this hatchback corners and holds to the road. The steering just feels so sharp, so precise. You feel so in control behind the wheel of this car. And with the all-wheel drive system designating that power to different wheels as needed, the car just has a ton of grip and composure mid-corner. Now, is the car perfect? No. It has a comically stiff suspension that never stops bouncing around the driver. The seat position just doesn't feel quite right and the fuel economy is not so great. That being said, 
The Focus RS has been a great daily driver for me and I think, in my opinion, it's a special car. As these types of manual combustion engine based performance cars get developed less and less, as this driving experience becomes less common, I'm really grateful personally and happy for the engagement and energy and liveliness that this car rewards the driver with. <laughs> Who knew that a Ford Focus could be so much fun? Gran Turismo 7 is one of the most ambitious and impressive games I've ever played. It is so clear that these developers wanted to take what they created in GT Sport and push the envelope even further in terms of scope, detail, graphics, simulation, and engagement. And in many ways, they've done that. As we saw earlier in this video, the car modeling, car customization, and photography tools have been done to near perfection. All of this giving the player a monumental variety of realistic cars to choose from and explore. The graphics, which you're seeing here on a console that came out in 2016, by the way, are stunning. The tracks and the environments in this game are always engaging. The dynamic wet weather emulation is almost in a league of its own. And finally, the new driving physics and force feedback are a vast improvement relative to GT Sport. They're much more realistic, less forgiving, more predictable, and overall, more fun. Now, the game isn't all amazing. For one, personally, I'm not really the type who likes to grind a game, and GT7 does feel like a bit of a grind. I usually just want to go driving and racing in whatever car I want, so aspects like the car acquisition assignments and tuning shops where you select and have to pay for levels of performance crankshafts or this or that part are not really fun for me, and especially when I have some time and want to use my simulator and do some racing, I'm really not into waiting around for some prize wheel to give me some tiny pile of animated gold coins or a random car part. Nonetheless, I've been playing Gran Turismo 7 casually for about a month now, and just with all the variety of cars, races, and missions, GT7 continues to keep me learning and experiencing new, variable ways to drive and race and play in my simulator, and that's what I enjoy most about this game. So. In conclusion, while it's not perfect, Gran Turismo 7, I think it's a great game hallmarked by its massive scope and the ambition of its development team. Hundreds and hundreds of people are working and have worked for thousands of hours making this game, creating something that now hundreds of thousands of us can enjoy playing. And for that, I'm thankful. I'm actually not though, because the only thing I'm thankful for right now are all of the various energy drinks that sponsor Formula One and motorsport in general. There's a reason these guys are so quick and personal internet research leads me to believe it's all in the energy potions. I'm happy to say that I'm now spending the majority of my life in mid chug, keeping myself level-headed and fully aware that consuming and engaging with internet content is all that matters and the key to everything. All right, so I've got the sim rig set up. If you wanna learn more about this sim rig, you can check out some of my previous videos. But for this video to finish off, we're gonna be comparing and seeing how close the simulation is to the real world Focus RS in terms of driving. I've got the car in Gran Turismo 7 set up as close as I can to my actual car. So no track tires, nothing like that. We're gonna to go to my tried and true, the Nürburgring GP, push it a little bit. And yeah, I'll give you my thoughts. Let's do it. All right, let's see what we can do here. Go easy on me. I don't usually commentate and drive at the same time because I'm really bad at it, but hey, I'm gonna try it for this video. All right, let's hit the main straight, full power, shifting right around 60 miles per hour at the top of second gear, just like you would in the real car. Over 100 now, you can hear that turbo spooling up right around 4,000 RPMs and above. We're gonna try to keep the car there because that's where that turbo is really gonna give that little four cylinder engine what it needs to put the power down. 
on the brakes early because it is a road car and hoping that if GT7 modeled this right, this car should be able to carve through this sector. And so far, so good. Road cars in GT Sport, they never really, you could never really drive them with confidence, I found personally, but this one, it feels capable and that's, that's what I was looking for. All right, five and six, chucking it into five on the power. Finding the apex. I wish I would have had a six speed manual for my sim rig, but unfortunately I don't. Still, comparisons can be made and so far I'm really happy with it. It's funny, all those little parts of your brain that help you or trick you into being immersed when you sim race, they're working a little better here because this, this, uh, view is something I see all the time, you know? So I wonder if anyone watching has their cars modeled in the game, if you feel the same way. It just feels that little bit more immersive. Trying to find the apex here. Could have been on the brakes a little bit more. Stay into third down the straight. All in all, this is great the physics and the force feedback in GT7. I mean, it's still a game kind of designed for the main user base being on controllers, but it feels great. And there's a confidence and a handling capability in this simulated version that's, I would say on par with what you get out of the real car. Powering out once again. Let's see, under 225 would be nice. A 223.120, okay, so overall, that was nice. Let's, let's stop filming this so that I can film the conclusion and stop filming for this video because it's gonna take forever to edit and I'm tired. Really, all I wanna say for the conclusion is I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. Um, it was really fun to make, and at the end of the day, I just finished the video feeling thankful for all the cool stuff that's in the world. It's so awesome to be able to be living now when there's just so much technology and engineering and advanced stuff at our disposal to have fun with, whether it's the Focus RS, which is a cool piece of mechanical engineering, the game, which is software, or the Simrig, which is some pretty cool hardware. All of this stuff is just leading to a more and more connected, interesting, and advanced world. And I'm really thankful to be a part of it, and I'm thankful you're a part of it too. And with that, I'll say, don't forget to push the limits of your own hobbies, learn, grow, be happy, all that stuff, because life's short and it's worth enjoying. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. Bye.